Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at the Google Pixel Tablet. This is kind of two devices in one. When it's docked to its included stand here, it is a Google Home, but when you undock it, it becomes a regular Android tablet. And this is one of the nicest and most polished Android tablets that I have ever tested. What Google's done is they've brought all the things that they've been doing on their Pixel phones over to a larger display, and it's really working out quite nice. And what we're gonna do in this video is take a closer look at what this new tablet is all about. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the tablet with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this tablet is all about. Now the price point on this is $499. I went with the entry level device that has 128 gigabytes of storage, but they also have a 256 gigabyte version available. There is no SD card option on this. So whatever storage you buy is what you're gonna have on the device for life. The nice thing here is that the stand comes with it. This is a charging stand, but it also has speakers on board. So the audio is dramatically enhanced when you dock the tablet to it. It latches on with magnets here. It holds on pretty tight as you can see. So the best way to get the tablet off is to lift it up from the bottom to remove it. And then to put it back on here, you just kind of line it up and the magnets will generally guide you into place to charge it. You'll notice though that it has a USB type C connector here. So when you're detached from the stand, you can charge via that port and they sell additional stands if you want to locate them in different parts of your home. But the stand will not work as a speaker unless it has a Pixel tablet attached to it. So you can't have it work standalone, unfortunately. Now the tablet is running with an 11 inch display. It's not an OLED display, but the contrast ratios and color and just readability of the screen are quite nice on this one. It is running at 500 nits of brightness and at a 2560 by 1600 resolution, that puts it at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So compared to an iPad, it's a little less square and a little more rectangular. So when you have it in its portrait mode here, the screen will look a little bit more narrow than an iPad if you're using one of those currently. But I found for you know, websites and that sort of thing, it actually is nice to have a good amount of height on the screen for reading, and it certainly works well for looking at documents and web pages in the landscape mode as well. And the front of the display has a coating on it to cut down on fingerprints. Inside it has the Google Tensor G2 chip. This is the same chip you'll find on the Pixel 7 phones, and it performs about where those Pixel 7 phones perform. So you're gonna get some good performance out of this tablet, and I'll show you some examples of that in a little bit and they have eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is very nice for multitasking and running some more demanding applications. The weight on this without a case comes in at 1.09 pounds or 493 grams. They do sell a case that has a little kickstand on it, and that case is compatible with the docking station as well. I did not get that one though uh, in my purchase here. And the back of it is metal. It's got a nice feel to it because they coated it with like some kind of ceramic coating. If you used a Pixel 5 phone, it kind of reminds me of that. So it's got a very nice premium polished feel to it. It doesn't feel cheap by any means, but you'll definitely want to make sure you don't toss it around or have a kid drop it on the display because it is a glass front on board here. You'll notice that I'm sometimes struggling to find the right spot to get those magnets to align. You do have to feel your way around a little bit before it all locks in. Although that optional case does have a ring around the docking area that makes it a little bit easier to get it docked. Now, as far as cameras are concerned, you've got one on the front here and one on the back. I will show you some image quality out of the back camera here first. The photos are fine, nothing spectacular, definitely not as good as their Pixel phones. It shoots 1080p video at 30 frames per second. As you can see here, it's got a very nice stabilizer on board. So the images that you're taking, even if you're walking around, should uh, look pretty nice on there. The back camera is the same as the front camera insofar as its specifications are concerned. They're both eight megapixels for their resolution. And you can see some image samples I took of the front camera earlier. It will also do 1080p, of course, and it will do fine on Zoom calls and Google Meet calls and pretty much any conferencing app that's available on Android is going to work on this one. 
And it also brings over some of the photo tools that you'll see on the Pixel phones. So you can go into any of the photos in your Google Photos library and use things like the magic eraser here to get rid of distracting objects in your photos, along with some of the other neat tools that they've been rolling out. But again, the cameras on the tablet here are nowhere nearly as good as what you'll get on their flagship Pixel phones. Now you don't get much in the way of ports on this one. Unfortunately, there's no headphone jack and the only port you've got is that USB-C port I showed you earlier. So you'll need to use Bluetooth headphones or connect a dongle up to that USB-C port. The tablet though does have some pretty good sounding speakers, stereo speakers to be exact. You've got speakers here on the left and on the right. And what's nice about it is that when you go into portrait mode, it will shift the orientation of the speakers to come out of the left and right hand side of the unit. So it will be stereo in no matter what orientation you put it into. I don't believe the dock though has stereo audio. So when you dock it, you get much nicer sound, much richer sound, a good amount of bass, but you're not gonna have the stereo separation that you get when the tablet is detached from the dock. But I do prefer the audio quality out of the dock. There is a power switch here at the top that has a fingerprint reader integrated into it. So when you uh, just turn on and leave your finger rested there, if it's one of the registered fingers, it will automatically unlock the screen and let you in. You also have a volume rocker up here. There are a couple of rubber feet here at the bottom and I can't figure out what these are for. I'm guessing to prevent it from slipping if you just stand it up against something. So unlike the iPads and other tablets that can be a little slippery when you're trying to stand them up without a case, uh, this one has a little bit of assistance here to kind of keep it from sliding out if you get everything positioned properly and it's leaning against something that is heavy enough to support it. The hub mode, which is what you see when you have it locked on the dock, is only available when it is attached to the docking station. And when it's not attached, you get your standard Android lock screen. Let's take a look now at some of the things the tablet can do and how it can perform. So let's start off here in hub mode. And if you've ever used a Google Home or a Nest Home device, this is exactly the same thing. But behind it, you've got all of the Android functionality. So when it's docked and it's sitting here, it'll recognize different voices in your home and it will do things like look up the calendar if your voice print matches. It will also allow you to control things in your home and ask for the weather and everything else that you can do with a Google device here. So for example, I could ask it to turn off the overhead light. And there it goes, it turns off my overhead light. And then because we're in this hub mode, it will then pull up a control that I can use to control things with my fingers if I want to do that. I also have my thermostat connected, so I could say, show me the studio thermostat. Okay. And it will pull up a control that I can use to turn that back on and do all of the things that I can do with my home device. You got a lot of neat features on here. They keep adding them all the time. I use my Google Home device that I've had for many years as a kitchen timer. It can do that quite easily. So all the things you can think of that one of these devices will do, this will do. Except when you put your finger on the fingerprint sensor, it's now an Android tablet. And that Android functionality will work when it's docked. And of course, it also works when you pull the tablet off the dock. Now, just like the Nest Home devices, this supports Chromecasting as a destination. So for example, I've got my phone open here with YouTube TV. I can go ahead and hit the Chromecast icon and connect to the Pixel tablet. And what it's going to do now is start playing back what I was watching on my phone here on the tablet. And of course, this is live TV right now that I'm watching. And there are many apps that support Chromecasting. But of course, because this is an Android tablet, you also have the option of installing the apps directly on here and accessing them like you would on a phone as well. So you kind of get the best of both worlds here. Now, as far as the Android tablet functionality is concerned, this is an excellent experience. Every bit as good as what I've seen on the recent Pixel phones. It is very responsive. It really feels polished. I do have some gripes though with the web browser. You can see there's a lot of wasted space here on the top of the screen as you're browsing around. You get a little bit of that space back, but I think they could probably tweak things a bit there. But the performance is great here, as you can see. We're on my Wi-Fi 6 network and everything just responds very quickly here and you can very easily browse the web and do all the other things you might want to do on your tablet from a basic standpoint. You can also do split screen here. So if I 
uh, just tap the little split screen icon. I can have two different web pages going at the same time. I could also grab, let me go back to it here real quick. I can also grab uh, YouTube and throw that onto the side here and have two things going side by side. So we can play back a video here. Maybe I'll rewind it a little bit. I can adjust the size of the screen here on the fly. And it's pretty good at doing all of these tasks. It feels, again, very polished and smooth. Reminds me a lot of the iPad experience, but this is Android, and this is Android uh, probably in the best uh, tablet uh, format I have seen in quite a while here. So I'm really pleased with how all of that is working. You do, of course, get the Google Play Store on here to find the apps to install. It works just like the phone interface does, but on a much larger screen. And you also get some of the features that you might find on their Pixel phones. That includes things like the live dictation feature that this will do while you're speaking into the voice recorder app. That's pretty cool. And it's actually very accurate, more accurate perhaps than uh, the Google Voice and the YouTube transcriptions tend to be. And then you can also make use of this neat feature that will do automatic transcriptions and translations when video is playing back on the device. So you're seeing here it live transcribing a YouTube video. It's doing that on chip, not using the YouTube translations or the transcriptions. And it also uh, will do that live translation or transcription in some video conferencing apps as well. So lots of neat little features that you'll uncover throughout your experience here. And one of the things I found with the Pixel devices is that they drop new features on their Pixel tablets and phones over time that weren't there when you first bought it. Now it also has pen support. It'll work with any USI 2.0 stylus. They will sell you one of theirs, of course, but if you got one that meets the standard, it's going to work too. I bought this one for the Kindle 11 that just came out, and this works just fine with the Pixel tablet. It picked it up and detected it automatically without having to install drivers. I found that it's got very minimal latency, a little bit, but not a lot. The screen is a little slippery to write on, so it's not as good as what you might experience on a Samsung tablet, for example, but you can take notes with a stylus and you don't need to get an expensive one either. They also have a magnet on the back for storing the stylus when it's not in use. Now, how well your stylus will stick to the back of the tablet will depend on the stylus that you have. The Google one will obviously work the best, but this cheap Amazon one here doesn't do too bad either, although it covers up the camera here when you attach it. So you just have to kind of feel around and look for the best spot, but it's nice to see that you can put the stylus away when you've got it docked and not have to worry about losing it. Now you can share the tablet with multiple users and everybody gets their own experience. What I have up right now is my daughter's experience. They actually have a great kid system here that simplifies the interface. It locks it down. You have some parental controls to control what uh, she can or can't do and the kid can also make their own little avatar here too which my daughter made for herself and what's nice about this too is I found there's a lot of free stuff like books so if I click on this book here uh, she can actually read this little storybook here which I thought was kind of cool so it's got some neat features some good parental controls and then my wife of course can have her own profile you switch between them up here and I can go back to mine if I want what I did find is that if you put your fingerprint on the fingerprint reader when you're not logged in, it won't switch over to you automatically. So you do have to do the switch first and then unlock. But it was nice to see that multiple users can all use this tablet without stepping on each other. Now I mentioned earlier the performance on the tablet is pretty good. It's also pretty good for playing games as you'll see here. This game is called Horizon Chase, a game that we've looked at a few times here on the channel. It runs very, very smoothly here as you can see. By the way, the display does not go beyond 60 hertz. Uh, the Pixel phones go above that, but I didn't find that to be much of an issue here. The game plays great, it looks great. Uh, some of the other Android games I tested, like Roblox and Minecraft, also perform quite well here. So the performance, I think, is adequate for a bulk, if not all, of the Android game library. And there's plenty of games that you can check out in the Google Play Store. Let's take a look and see how it handles emulation now. So here is the Dolphin GameCube emulator running one of my favorite games, Burnout 2. And as you can see here, we're running quite well, pretty much at 100% almost all of the time, which means we're pushing about 60 frames per second here. It controls great, it looks great. Not every GameCube game is going to run this well. There are some that really tax the hardware further, but games like Burnout 2 here will run at full speed. The Dolphin emulator is an excellent way to enjoy some older games. And for the PS2, I loaded up Aether SX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator. 
This is Ace Combat 5, and here this game is running at full speed as well. Both games I pretty much put in their default settings here, so this is not upscaling the graphics at all, uh, and I found that leaving everything at the default with those two emulators worked out just fine, and other older games will play well too. The Dreamcast will really run nicely on this as well. So all in, I think a pretty good level of performance, but I did run the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark Test, and there I got a score of 6,596. This is right in line with the other tensor-powered Google devices that I tested previously. You will see, though, that the current low-end iPad, the 10th generation one with the A14 chip, does perform a little better, and that entry-level iPad costs a little less than this one, but you've got the flexibility of Android here that allows you to install a lot more. I was also able to sideload apps on here by downloading them directly from websites without any issues. I also found it does a pretty nice job with game streaming. This is No Man's Sky running on the GeForce Now service. GeForce Now is pretty bandwidth intensive and it's been able to keep up with it just fine over the Wi-Fi 6 network here, so no problems there. Game Pass streaming from the Xbox side also work pretty well too. So if you are looking to stream games either through a service or from a computer in your home, I think this tablet will do well at that. And of course, you got the nice built-in stand and loudspeaker to go with it. And in full disclosure, NVIDIA has provided the channel with a free subscription to GeForce Now Ultimate for doing these kinds of tests. One last thing to talk about on this tablet is the update policy. Google has committed to three years of OS updates and five years of security updates. That's a little short of the eight years they do on their Chromebook devices. I would have liked to have seen maybe a couple more years of OS upgrades available for this tablet because Google does tend to lose interest in products and dump them. So unfortunately, this one's only gonna get updated for the next three years. And if you buy this next year, you've only got two years left. So just be aware of that. I don't think the updates on this are going to last very long. But overall, I found it to be an excellent tablet experience. By far, the best tablet experience I've had with an Android device. And I thought Google was trying to get out of the tablet business and kind of switch everything to Chrome OS for larger screens. But it looks as though they've changed their mind again and have put together an excellent tablet with this device. It performs great. Again, it feels a lot like the Pixel devices do. And it's something that if you were looking to switch out of an iPad, I think, uh, definitely worth considering given just how good everything is here. And of course, you get the dock with the speaker built in as part of the deal, which doesn't happen too often with these tablet devices. So I would love to see the tablet being sold separately for a lower price. I would love to see a smaller screen tablet as well that has similar functionality. But I guess Google's going to wait and see how well this one does before they do anything else in this tablet space. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.